Roaring Twenties marked the first time in American history when more people lived in cities and towns than in rural areas. Americans moving to cities from small villages had to adapt not only to new and challenging physical living conditions, they encountered a new, more permissive moral environment as well. Two events fittingly demonstrate the clash between traditional moral values of the country and the modern mores of the city. The Scopes Trial and Prohibition. In 1925, the state of Tennessee passed a law that outlawed any teaching of English biologist Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin's book, The Origin of Species, challenged contemporary beliefs about creation and outraged fundamentalist Christian's literal interpretation of the Bible, believing God created the universe in six days. John Scopes, a high school biology teacher from Dayton, Tennessee, believed Darwin was right, and despite the state law, taught his students the theory of evolution. As a result, Scopes was charged under the anti-evolution statute and went to trial for the misdemeanor. The American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, which had been founded during the Red Scare earlier in the decade, hired the most renowned trial lawyer of the day, Clarence Darrow, to defend Scopes. The prosecutor was equally well known. William Jennings Bryan, a three-time candidate for president, skilled orator, and fundamentalist Christian. The press had a field day and called it the monkey trial as the big city reporters repeatedly made fun of rural values. Darrow defended his stance. We have the purpose of preventing bigots and ignoramuses from controlling the education of the United States, and you know it. And that is all. Although the judge found John Scopes guilty of violating the state's law, many felt that Clarence Darrow had actually won the case because he had managed to get William Jennings Bryan to admit on the stand that he did not actually believe the earth was created in six 24-hour days. The Tennessee Supreme Court later overturned the verdict on a technicality, and Scopes was set free. But the debate over teaching the theory of evolution in schools still continues. Americans with conservative, traditional values succeeded in convincing Congress to prohibit the sale and use of alcohol. But prohibition, the noble experiment as Herbert Hoover dubbed it, simply didn't work. On January 16, 1920, the 18th Amendment to the Constitution was passed, outlawing the manufacture, sale, or transportation of alcoholic beverages. The amendment was supported mainly by rural Americans from the South and Southwest, who believed drinking to be a sin. Urban city dwellers generally saw drinking as a natural part of life, and the use of alcohol as an individual's decision. Evangelist Billy Sunday spoke for many prohibitionists. Every man who casts a vote for the saloons deserves that his son shall die a drunkard, or that his daughters should be consigned to the tender mercies of a drunken husband. Billy Sunday got his wish when prohibition became the law of the land. But prohibition did not stop people from drinking alcohol. Many went to speakeasies, hidden illegal clubs, and drank liquor smuggled in by bootleggers from Canada. Organized crime, which provided illegal booze or hooch, flourished, and prohibition incited more crime, not less. Thirteen years later, the noble experiment was over. 